What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart, and um. <sighs> How are we feeling? I'm feeling good. I hope you guys are feeling good. And we are about to get into it. I want to say thank you to everybody for liking, sharing, subscribing my videos, watching right now. And we've had a lot of new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Give me a chance to check out what this channel's about, what the Warriors are about. And um, what better way to start and show you guys than this right here. Because we're about to talk. We're about to talk about some Man of Steel, some DC Universe, and everything that goes along with that. But we're going to do a TLDR, in case you don't want to be here for the full length of time that I'm going to be doing this video, because it's going to be an in-depth discussion. Yeah. So let's do a one-minute TLDR for what's going on. Start from now. Henry Cavill got into a meeting with James Gunn and, P and what is it? Um, Peter Saffron. And then he said that we are no longer going to move along with you as Superman. We're going to be doing a new Superman movie that's going to be a younger version of Superman. And there's no space for you. Not an origin story. Thank goodness. Henry Cavill's out. Jason Momoa is not going to be Aquaman after Aquaman 2. In talks with um, James Gunn, potentially going to be Lobo. Gal Gadot, Patty Jenkins, out. No longer DC Universe. Flash <laughs> is over for Flash. Ben Affleck, not going to be Batman. Going to direct a movie in the DC Universe and Black Adam's done. Matt Reeves as well. He is not going to bring his Batman into the James Gunn universe. It's going to be in its own world, standalone, just like the Joker is. TLDR, sorry. 15 seconds more than a minute. But hey, that was a TLDR of what's going on. But now, in about five seconds, I'm about to go in and talk about everything in depth. Let's go. What an absolute waste. A waste and a mess. Now, I'm not a fan of Henry Cavill. I'm not. I've not gone to cinema to watch any of his movies. I've watched The Witcher and I like The Witcher. And I like Man of Steel. And I like him in those roles. That is it. I've watched The Mission Impossible that he was in. But I didn't watch it for him. But he was good in that movie too. But I'm not a Henry Cavill fan. He hasn't even made that many movies. Like if you go to, if you look how many movies has Henry Cavill done where he is the lead actor. And the movie's been a big success. You could say Man of Steel. But in the industry, Superman, Man of Steel, was not a success. I love that movie. A Henry Cavill movie that comes out in the cinema, I'm not going to watch it. A Henry Cavill movie where he's Superman... Nothing can stop me from watching that movie. I will watch any Superman movie that is directed by Zack Snyder that has got Henry Cavill. He is an incredible Superman. The best Superman. For me, Henry Cavill is number one. When it comes to this movie, I personally, in my opinion, personally... He is the best Superman. Free. I'm a massive fan of Henry Cavill as Superman. But I'm not a massive fan or a fan of his in any other 
context. I don't follow him on Instagram. Um, I respect that he's a massive um, Warhammer fan and he's a big fan of Witcher and he was Geralt in Witcher. That's it. And it is a waste that someone that could that did the role of Superman and you could tell he cared so much about Superman. His the way he his character portrayal, he changed his accent, he changed his body language, he changed his the way he, he carried himself, his body, he transformed his body. He embraced the character, the law. Everything about Kalel, Man of Steel, Superman. He it was the perfect definition of Superman. Everything that I wanted Superman to be, he was that. Everything. The fighting, his powers, every the way he carried himself. He was in he was more than happy to be in service of the character. There was, I didn't see an ego with Henry Cavill when he played Superman. He properly gave himself to the character and the law. He served Superman. Superman did not serve him. He did not use Superman as a vehicle to propel himself into fame or stroke his ego. It was all about the character. And the vision. I love that. What a waste. We only got one movie of that. That is not a Superman 2. This is a team up movie. This was their rushed. Basically team up movie. To compete with Avengers. That's what this was. Because let's not forget. At the time. That Man of Steel came out. Marvel was already on the way. With their Captain America. With their four. And they're building the Avengers. They were already on their way. DC wanted to rival that. They wanted that billion dollar box office that Marvel was getting. Marvel was getting the Avengers. They needed to rush and get themselves to Justice League. And Superman... He was a casualty of that. When did the Justice League? Aquaman didn't even have his own movie yet. Flash didn't even have his own movie yet. Still doesn't have his own movie. Batman, um, Batman didn't have his own movie. Superman only had one movie. Come on, man. Unchecked ambition. No creative direction. No structure. Just a mess. Look at it right now in 2022. We've got... How many Jokers do we have? We've got two Jokers. Technically, there's a Joker in Matt Reeves' world. There's the Joker. We've got two Harlequins. And Lady Gaga that's going to potentially be in the next Joker movie. Right? And then we've got... Um, Margot Robbie Harlequin. It's ridiculous. We've got Suicide Squad. One version of the original Suicide Squad. And then we've got another version. James Gunn version of the Suicide, Suicide Squad. Uh, but they're different. They're not the same. But then you have some characters. I think it's um, Kilgore or something like that. The captain the general in the Suicide Squad. He's in the first one. And Harlequin's in the first one. And Captain Boomerang. Is in the first is in the first one, and then everyone else gone, and Amanda Waller, and they are in the second one as well. But it's in a different world, a different kind of like universe, the James Gunn universe. But you've already missed mixed and matched, you mishmashed it, so now it's all confusing. Like what is going on? What's the structure? You look at the Marvel universe, and it's always got a thread. Even Iron Man, which was the most chaotic Iron Man that didn't even have a script, had a thread. It was leading towards the Avengers. Oh my goodness. They even licked a movie as chaotic and messy as Iron Man 1 to Captain America to 4 to the Avengers. 
it was up because chaotic as that had a structure every single marvel film is its own standalone movie but it has a thread that binds it together iron man 4 captain america building together to make the avengers loki comes into the picture the avengers black widow hulk they come together then loki leads into the the infinity gem and then the infinity gem is building towards thanos but before thanos we have to build up the avengers we go and get another infinity gem we get vision then we get ultron Avengers movie. Avengers movie. We build more of the Marvel world and the Marvel characters. You know? And then we get characters like Spider-Man. And Bucky comes in there. Black Panther comes in there. Sam Wilson comes in there. The Black Order comes in there. Thanos. The Infinity War. It all builds together. There's always a thread that sews it together. Even now, as something as crazy and fail as Phase 4 has still got a thread of being the new generation of Avengers, which I don't really think is going to work, but, you know, we can still get past that. And now we are in the mid-arc of the Vibranium Wars. Because now we've seen how the universe... Because if you look at the whole Infinity war and everything that is going on they've opened the world to the mystic realm to the cosmic world so now we've got the power cosmic we've got the mystic world you know we've got all these type of characters that are in the universe and earth needs to step it sharp man and now we've got vibranium vibranium can change everything there is a thread that leads to everything where is that with DC? It doesn't. It's chaotic. It's just complete madness. You have Wonder Woman. The first Wonder Woman movie. That movie was an absolute... It was... A, I'm not going to say... It was a very, very, very good movie. How do you go from Wonder Woman to Wonder Woman 1984? It, it just it blows my mind it literally blows my mind you get something that is so incredibly amazing in wonder woman and then you get a dumpster fire like wonder woman 1984 that movie was terrible that movie was so bad man it's crazy it's almost like for ragnarok and then for love and thunder that one, I don't know which one was worse. I think, I, I actually think, yeah, Fall Love and Thunder was worse. Just because the movie was so silly, irritating, nonsensical, and discombobulated that I didn't have, at least Wonder Woman had um, Wonder Woman, you know, riding on lightning. Right and stuff like that, and it had this. There was some element of 1984 Wonder Woman that I did like. Yeah, I would say about four percent of that movie was amazing, amazing. Four percent, like when she was riding the lightning and stuff like that. That's what I'm talking about. But 96 percent of that movie was absolute garbage. The fact that Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot are now gone, thank goodness. See ya. See ya. If that's what you're going to do with Wonder Woman, you, you gotta go. You gotta go. Ban Affleck Batman. Didn't even get a movie. <sighs> what is going on? And it's actually also funny. If Batman vs. Superman, he was actually bloody good. He was actually amazing. In the Ultimate Edition. Oh, Batman vs. Superman. Batman was actually good. Especially towards the ending. After he reconciled with Cal. He actually was an amazing character. And Wonder Woman was pretty damn good in this movie too. Come on, man. 
But what's crazy is they killed off Superman in this movie. That's a mistake. That was a mistake. The second appearance of Henry Cavill Superman and you kill him off already? What? It's too quick, man. Slow down. Slow down, man. I don't know. I don't know. It's just so confusing to me, man. The whole situation. And then, let's go into current events of what is going on. Yeah. We've already addressed Patty Jenkins. She did put a Twitter, um, longer or a, a long statement saying that everyone is saying that she walked away from Wonder Woman. She didn't. She was let go because her vision of Wonder Woman is not going to fit, which I agree. Yeah. With, and this Wonder Woman 1984 clearly show what happened when Zack Snyder's not in the picture. They can't do anything. Before Henry Cavill Superman, they didn't know how to build Superman, how to make a Superman movie. Let's not forget what happened with Superman from Christopher Reeves Superman till um, 2010. What happened? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. When they first announced. Henry Cavill, Man of Steel, and they showed a picture of him. I'll never forget it. I've got the wallpaper on my original computer. My computer that has still has Windows 7. And it was when he was fighting when he was fighting Ursa. I think he was like he was like um in a safe or in a vault place or something like that. And then there were pictures of him where he was in outside of the fortress of solitude and he was like that and then you saw the cape blowing in the wind it wasn't a real picture it was a real picture but it was you know kind of like artistically edited but that picture was amazing that was another picture that i had man and then the trailer and the music wow man just thinking about it it's just it's so sad and wasteful bro holy moly And Patty Jenkins put up a Twitter um, description where she's saying that she was going to work on Wonder Woman. They were taking too long. Then she was going to work on Squ Rogue Squadron. But then they were messing her about. So she went back to Wonder Woman. Rogue Shock said they want her back again. Random. She said, okay, sure, I'll do it. But it's still in the writing. It's still in limbo. And then you've got Wonder Woman 1984 taking hella long. Because of Wonder Woman 1984, everyone's like, well, this people don't, clearly don't like it. Movie's not great, let's be honest. It's a complete disaster, right? So, And essentially, she's saying she got let go. She didn't walk away. Done. And James Gunn commented saying that, yeah, he's going to test. All the discussions that he has had with her have been great. I've been professional. That's her bit, yeah. Henry Cavill, just a couple months ago or weeks ago, said, yes. What you saw in Black Adam is just a little piece, a little sample of what is going to happen in the future. So now we realise that was not official. He hadn't even signed a contract. That's such a amateur thing to do man or trying to strong arm the studio into signing a contract by putting it out on the internet because you know you've got millions of fans and they can strong arm the company into signing Henry Cavill just like the Snyderverse fans did with you know, Justice League, the Snyder Cut. So you could see us doing that. But essentially, what now we see is he was campaigning. He hadn't signed a contract. Why not wait to sign a contract? Before you make a big announcement. 
So it's basically weaponizing the fans to strong arm the actual studio into making a Man of Steel, a new second movie with him in it. That's essentially what was happening. Because now you're not moving forward. And a big issue is bloody Black Adam. A rock super movie. You have Henry Cavill, Superman, as a cameo character in that. Superman's a big deal. And you want to make him a cameo character? As a vehicle to propel Black Adam? To propel a rock super movie? A movie... Where Dwayne doesn't even try to embody the character. No mannerism of Black Adam doesn't even attempt to learn the character. He doesn't even have an accent. He's from, um, uh, he's from, um, the country that he's from, right? I know it, I, it'll come to me, right? He doesn't even have an accent, he got a proper American actor, his normal accent. Just muscles on top of muscles, juiced up, veins popping out. That's all it takes, really. Punching up planes. Constantly reminding us in the movie that it's not his power. His son was meant to be um, was supposed to wield that power. But his son died, he, he and the son gave him the power. So you constantly remind us in the movie that you're a fake. So he's a fake natural, um, because he says that he's a natural, his, all his muscles is natural, when he's not. So he's basically a fake there. Then he's a fake in a movie, where he's saying, um, where he's constantly saying that I was not the original, not originally meant to wield this power. It was my son. In a movie, the area that you're from, you don't even have the accent from that country. You didn't even do the work. To learn the accent or the dialect. Come on, man. Come on, bro. Come on. Just the other day, look at Black Panther. You have so many different languages and dialects and cultures in that movie. The people embody and are in service to the cultures that they're representing. To the areas that they're from. They have the dedication to do the work. And a lot of the people didn't know the languages, but they learned the language. They did not use the excuse of not knowing to not to do. They didn't use that excuse. And it's amazing. And then you have Black Adam. Didn't even do the work to learn an accent. Just monologues, wrestling monologues and one-liners. And punching stuff and being invulnerable and killing people and being super rock. People are tired of seeing a super rock movie, man. People see through it. It's so see through at this point. Come on, man, stop. And then you bring Superman into it. You bring Superman. And let's be honest The Rock brought in Henry Cavill for himself. He didn't bring it to help Superman. He didn't bring it to help um, Ma um, Henry Cavill or Man of Steel. He did it for himself. He wants people to like him. And he wants to do it to make his movie big. Because he wants to make a super rock movie of him versus Superman. And him being on the same level as Wonder Woman. And The Flash. And Aquaman. And Batman, he wants to be on their level. So he can fight alongside them. That's what Dwayne wants. And he used Superman as a cameo for that failed movie. People are tired of that movie, man. That movie had a budget of over 200 million. The movie hasn't even made 400 million yet. Yet you used hundreds of millions to promote the movie. And God knows how much they paid him and the cast for that movie. That movie, I think they say, has to make like 600 million in order for it to make a to make a profit. That movie's not making 600 million, bro. There's no chance of that. 
and you've taken Henry Cavill along with you. You've sunk Henry Cavill. We were getting over the fact that Henry Cavill most probably is not going to be Superman ever again. It's taken years for us to get over that wound. And then Dwayne, for his own selfishness, because he wants to promote his movie and he wants his movie to be good, and nothing makes a movie bigger than a collaboration, than having multiple heroes turn up in your movie, even if it is a cameo for less than 30 seconds, bring in Superman. Bring in the biggest, most powerful, and then it, um, the way it's like, the hierarchy of power will change. Who are you? Who are you to say that? Man come out of nowhere, his first movie, and he's killing people off. Not even likeable character. Not nobody care about Teth Adam. Not nobody care about this stuff, man. And I'm salty. Because in that failed movie, you've dragged down Henry Cavill. You had a character down. Because now you've opened up a wound. You've opened up the wound of losing Henry Cavill Superman again. Just when the wound of losing him and his future as Superman was closing, you've opened that wound again and thrown salt into that wound. Come on, man. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The best Superman. Well, as I said, it's my personal opinion, right? You know, all I could do is say my personal feelings. He was number one, bro. Oh. And also, he burnt the boat with Netflix. He left um, Netflix Witcher because he wanted to fully commit to Superman. Because of Dwayne and the prior um, administration that were in charge of the DC Studios that are no longer there. What a disaster. What a disaster. What an absolute disaster. Maybe if he wasn't in um, Black Adam, something could have worked out. I don't know. I don't know. But I do see it because without Zack Snyder, I don't like a I don't like a Henry Cavill movie. A Henry Cavill Man of Steel, I don't like it. Without um, Henry Cavill and, and Zack Snyder, they have to be together, man. It's like um, James Cameron and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Look at Terminator One. That movie is one of the best movies ever. Terminator 1, bro. Lightning in the bottle. You can't replicate it. Terminator 2 was actually better. Same team. James and Arnold. Incredible when they work together. Oh. Terminator 2 was one of the best movies I've ever seen, man. I love that movie. Look at the Terminator movies that Arnold has been in without James Cameron. I rest my case. Do I need to say more? I don't think so. So it is just deeply, deeply unfortunate. There's more. Now, James Gunn, this man is a walking, talking, media, news machine. Like no executive I've ever seen. Kevin Feige. Everybody saying stuff about um, She-Hulk. Pissed off about She-Hulk. Phase 4. Kevin Feige will say a damn word. James Gunn, you even whisper something that he doesn't like or is controversial or talks about his movies. He's, on, he's making the longest statement possible. Yeah. Variety on the 14th of December, they said 
a well-placed source tells Variety that James Gunn and Peter Saffron are exploring the possibility of incorporating Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson Batman in the wider DC universe. Which I don't think is that far of a stretch. I can see James Patterson, Batman, in James Gunn, Suicide Squad world. I can see it. I can see it because Batman was overpowered in Robert Patterson's um, and... What's the name again? Matt Reeves, Batman. He was overpowered! Literally, his only weakness was his emotions. But you look at his history... Look at who the character is. I get it. This is a younger version of Batman. It makes sense to why he's like the way he is. He doesn't need to be a goofball. Even though, yeah, Suicide Squad is a little bit goofy, right, and over the top in places. Batman doesn't need to subscribe to being goofy. He can be who Batman is and deal with the Suicide Squad. Because the Suicide Squad are always going to be unstable misfits. Crazy, powerful, but you can't mess with the boss. Who is the Batman? Who is Vengeance? Right? But, let's not digress. And then, later on, James Gunn reported in a tweet. Literally, hours after Variety put out that statement of their article, James Gunn debunked it. He said, there's a few reporters that I actually love more than the guy that wrote that article. Saying that Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson was um, Batman was going to join the wider DC universe that James that um, James Gunn is building, and he said he's a good guy, the reporter, but in this case he needs to get new sources because it is entirely true. So that is a blower, variety, a news media source, one of the big news media sources got exposed. Immediately, like that, putting out fake news. You just put out a statement to millions of people. It's not, it's not correct information. That is a blow up. That is literally a blow up. That is massive. Because him saying that uh, Matt Reeves, Robert Patterson was going to be in the wider DC universe. That is huge. And then James Gunn to come out and say, untrue. Not true. Reporter's a good guy, but that information is false. Stop it. That's a big deal. Okay. And then James Gunn said that him, the DC, people head to DC that hired him, and um, Peter Saffron, they've talked. They've got a timeline of what they're going to do. They have a plan. They're going to start off with a Superman movie that's going to be a younger version of Superman. Not an origin movie. Don't give me another origin movie, thank goodness. Say if you like Batman, I don't want to see another... If I have to see Martha uh, Martha Kent's pearls on, on, the, on the pavement with blood again, don't do it. I don't want to see it. Right, but he did confirm. No origin story. Yes. Right, so immediately, a lot of things have been debunked. Patty Jenkins, gone. Jason Momoa, which let's be honest, he, even though it's a billion dollar movie, movie has crumbled with Zack Snyder not being there. The whole franchise and the whole situation with Amber Heard. Oh my goodness, dude, stop it. Ruined. It's a blow up. It's a blow up, man. So, Aquaman. That movie only did well, but let's be honest, because of Jason Momoa. I went to watch that movie because the trailer, actually, the trailer was incredible. The, the first trailer was really, really good, but the second trailer was incredible, bro. 
And just Jason Momoa is a likeable person. The man himself, he just comes across as a really nice guy, right? You want to you wanna support that guy. That's how Jason Momoa looks like to me. And he's about it. He's about it. So, we look at the whole world of Aquaman. And it's not going to be any more after Aquaman 2. But he is talking to James Gunn about potentially being Lobo. I don't like the idea of going from one character to another character. The same actor with the same look. I don't like it. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm not happy about it. I'm really not. And a bad Affleck. Yeah. No more. He can't be Batman. No more. Goodbye. It was a good Batman in Batman vs. Superman. But it's just too messy now. It's too... Everything is just so discombobulated. He hasn't even had, so he's, he hasn't even had his own Batman movie. It's been... T it's too long now. It's too long. When did this movie come out? This movie... Came out... Man, I can't see when it came out, bro. It's not even on here. I think this came out 2016. 2016. Stop it. Stop it. It's over five years, man. Over seven years. It's too late. Is it too late, man? It's too late. It's too late, man. You can't have a movie that is seven years old. You still have a sequel. Time waits for no one. So, Van Affleck, unfortunately, is gone. What is going on with Cyborg? Cyborg was really cool. He was awesome. But I think with the way his relationship was with the DC executives, I don't think that's going to work. So, I think Ray Fisher, Cyborg, is not happening. Yeah. So, yeah. It's just an unfortunate state of affairs, man. And a complete waste of an incredible role with the perfect pair-up. And it kills me, man. Just to know that we're never going to see Henry Cavill in Man of Steel 2. But even if we saw him again, it's so messy. Because of what's happened here... What's happened here? What's happened in the Justice League? Then what happened in Teth Adam? Man, it's just so messy. So, yes, I agree. Because it's so messy and it's just all over the place, you need to just wipe the slate clean, just purge everything. And if you're going to start, you have to start. From a fresh foundation, yeah? A fresh foundation with a storyline and an arc. You have got over 50, 60 years of incredible stories that you can tell. That can link together. And he's a good story uh, maker as well. Storyteller and director. Very good with character-driven stories. The purge needed to happen. Even though it kills me. With Henry Cavill no longer being Superman. It needed to happen. I don't want to see nothing more about Teth Adam. Black Adam. I don't want to see it. Out of here. I don't want any fakeness in this new universe. Over. Finish. You had your shot. You showed you weren't serious. You're out of here. You're out of here. So, get people that care. Get directors that actually care about the material. Look at Matt Reeves. You can clearly see Matt Reeves cares so much about what he's doing with Batman. Because we care about these characters. The whole superhero world. Batman. Superman. 
Spider-Man, Black Panther, Black Widow, Thor. Look at all these characters. Aquaman, Zatanna. All these characters. They mean something to us. It's like a modern day mythology. How we talk about the stories. How we feel about the characters. How everyone would... You, I start talking to somebody about Venom. We're pretty much going to be there for like four or five hours. Just talking about Venom. About the character. About what could happen. About how we could introduce... How could Null be introduced into the world of Marvel? We could talk about um, Black Cat. And how she could be introduced in the Spider-Man world. You know, talk about maybe Spider-Gwen. Maybe she could come in and have her own um, storylines in the whole Marvel world. We talk about Blade. What could happen with Blade in the whole Marvel world. And then it could spiral on because we care so much. So when an actor comes in. And doesn't even take the time to do the work to learn the accent of the characters of the character that he's portraying all you care about is just pumping yourself up full of drugs getting as juiced and jacked as possible and then do nothing but wrestling monologues and one-liners and then try to use superman as a vehicle to stroke your own ego to make give your to make yourself the super rock movie in superhero form so your movie can be massive and you can keep making money and inflate your own ego. Get out of here, bro. Get out of here. Show that character Superman more respect than a cameo. It's a slap in the face, man. It's a slap in the face, man. The fact that they had Superman in there and they thought it was okay to put him in there as a cameo. Stop it. Stop it. Is that, is that it? Is that all Superman is to these people? He's just a throwaway character that is there to boost other people up. He's, a, he's an enhancement character now. I'm saying that because it's winding me up. It's winding me up, man. Everybody likes Superman. Everyone loves Superman. Superman is bloody cool, man. It's unfortunate. It's deeply unfortunate. But... As Cavill said, we have to mourn, deal with it, and move forward. James Gunn is a good storyteller. He's going to be running the DC universe, and I trust he can do a good job. I trust he can do a good job. You just have to focus on Superman. Batman, first of all, you have to knock those out the park, then build, don't rush to do a ensemble movie, a team up movie, don't rush to that, you're starting fresh, don't look at Marvel saying they're on phase 5, they're on phase 5, let's not forget phase 4 for Marvel, they've been doing this for over 10 years, well over 10 years, and their phase 4 was terrible, terrible literally the whole of phase four they've had there was i think like as far as i'm concerned black panther wakanda forever was the only good thing about phase four my opinion just my personal thoughts of it so yeah that's all i really got to say about that really disappointed but I do understand it. We're going to move forward. We're going to see what they're going to do. I pray. That they get people. That care about it. And they don't rush it. You don't throw millions. And hundreds of millions behind something. And they don't put every single movie. To be directed by James Gunn. One man cannot build up a whole cinematic universe. You have to get people that care and that, can, that care about the characters, care about the law, study the law. I want to do faith to it. People that can do the work. People on the level of Ryan Coogler, of Sam Raimi, of a James Gunn, as the Russo brothers. 
You have to get people on that level that care about the work. Zack Snyder. I mean, they're not, they're no way they're going to bring Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder is too much of a powerful influence. That is somebody that you give him the reins of a movie and it's just going to grow its own life. It's just going to be its own thing. It's not going to match with a world vision, right? Because in the day, we still got the mess of the flash to deal with. So. The Joker, The Flash, Aquaman. After that, then we rebuild. It's the only thing I can say about that. That's it. And please stick to one cinematic universe. I don't want to see multiple dimensions of um, Batman here, this universe, and a Batman in that universe, and a Harlequin in this universe, and a, and a Harlequin in that universe, and a Joker here, and a Joker there, and a Batman there, and a Batman there, and a Superman here, and a Superman there. One. One universe. That's it. Because it's getting too messy. This is how we got here in the first place. And don't get arrogant. And think to yourself, we could just do whatever we want because you can't. Because as I said before, until Zack Snyder, they didn't know what to do with Wonder Woman. They didn't know what to do. They were out there saying, we can't do a Wonder Woman movie, a character uh, in with red, gold and blue. It won't work in the modern age. You got Marvel out here doing Captain Marvel in those colours. You got Captain America in red and in blue and red and white. You've got um, Spider Man in blue and red. Don't tell me you can't do bright colours and it don't work because Marvel are out here showing you, yes, you can if you do the characters correctly and you actually care and you do the work. Yes, you can. Superman, we don't know what direction to go with Superman. He's a guy that wears his pants on the outside and he's all in blue and he's got a red cape. We don't know how to make it work. I don't know. I was about taking the pants off. I don't know. How about muting the colours a little bit? A little bit. I thought doing a proper story. A character driven story with this character. I don't know. Zack Snyder come along, showed you can do it. So I don't want to see DC get too big for their britches and say we know that we can do it. We know that you because you didn't know until Zack Snyder. Yeah. So they have to humble themselves. It's very, very important to humble yourself before you move forward. It's unfortunate that Matt Reeves is not going to be joining um, the, the whole DC universe that James Gunn is building, right? But we can't lose Matt Reeves. We can't lose Matt Reeves. We can't lose Robert Pattinson, Batman. No way. No way. No way. Because it's too good. It's That movie is too good. I want to see more of it. And... You, I, Matt Reeves cares. That's the most important to me. When a director cares, I want to see more of their work. When they do good work. And it's not just fluff. It's not stupidness and unchecked ambition and going crazy with it. And just inflating their own ego. Like the dude did with uh, Fall Love and Thunder. Because look, Fall Love and Thunder was the director stroking his own damn ego. And just do whatever he wanted. For Ragnarok. Trod a very. Very. Fine line. And they made it. They did it well. And in this movie. They didn't even. They didn't even walk on the. Same side of the road. They weren't even on the same planet. Let alone a road. Or a pavement. Or a island or a town or a country they were in a different universe and do whatever the hell it's like that movie was random whatever sprung to mind they just put in a movie 
they can work. James Gunn Universe can work, but structure. Structure is important. And the main thing that is legit, that is going to cause some instability at the moment, is the Joker movie. Having two Jokers and two Harlequins. And Matt Reeves having a Batman. And James Gunn having a Batman in his universe. Those are going to be the two things that are going to cause imbalance. But we'll see how that goes. Warriors, that was me going on a full rant about this. But this is a big deal, man. And I'm pretty salty, as you could tell, about just the whole situation with Superman. And that fact that his last role... I better not stop. I better stop talking because it's winding me up just thinking about it. The last time we're ever gonna see Superman, Henry Cavill, as as is as a cameo in Teth Adam, Black Adam, the Rock Super movie. It's so disappointing. That's how the way he goes out. And Henry Cavill burnt the bridge for Netflix. He walked out on Netflix to fully commit to a role in Superman that he hadn't even signed a contract yet. And they put Netflix in a bad, bad way. Like with the audience, Netflix does not look good. Because it looks like people, a lot of people are saying that they fired Henry Cavill, which is not the case right but there's a lot of situations where they're saying it was like a toxic work set or whichever we're never going to know the truth the only thing that we know is henry cavill got a role in as superman thought he was going to be um, reprising the role as superman indefinitely turned out that's not the case made the decision to leave the witcher what's he gonna do now because Henry Cavill doesn't make movies. When he was out of Superman, what movie was he doing? He wasn't doing any movies. His lifeline was The Witcher. Since Man of Steel, he's literally done one movie, which was the um, Man from Uncle. And that movie was that movie was terrible. That movie was bad, right? And the Mission Impossible movie. And in that Mission Impossible movie, he dead. Ethan Hunt killed that guy four times over. That guy, dead, dead, dead. He dropped a helicopter on that guy, dude. He threw him, he dropped him down the mountain, a, a cliff. He deformed him and then dropped a the helicopter on him. He, he dead in that movie, bro. He, he's a goner. And he was a bad guy. And he was literally just a victim in that movie. So... That's his credit since I, since Man of Steel. Since his role as Superman. You know, and then Witcher. And um, the movie um, Enola Holmes. Where he's Sherlock Holmes. But he's a sidekick. Sherlock Holmes is a sidekick. He's in enhancement talent for... In Nola Holmes. <sighs> Such a waste. It's a waste, man. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And the thing is... <sighs> I like this guy so much in Man of Steel. And I'll be honest with you. I will keep it real. You tell me a Henry Cavill movie's coming out, I'm not watching it. I don't care for Henry Cavill movies. I care about him as Man of Steel. If I hear him in Man of Steel, I'm there. But we'll see. We'll see. I mean, yeah, I watch Witcher. I love Witcher, but I played Witcher game. I got over seven, 600 hours on that game. <laughs> so, of course, I'm going to watch it. Warriors, almost an hour, 
ranting, but I had a lot to get on my system. Feels good. And um, to all the new subscribers, this is pretty much almost what the future looks like. When I talk, I go in. Comment section warriors, let's talk about it. This is a big topic. And um, how do you feel? Because I know a lot of you guys are like, you like your superhero movies. You're a fan of the lore. You've got to feel a way about this, man. I want to talk. I need to know. And Christmas, I am going to do a live stream. So we could talk about all this stuff during the live stream. Also, you know, I'm going to be doing on live stream, talk about this. Going to be talking about the best films of this year, the best games of this year. All that type of stuff. So it's going to be fun. Hope you join me. Lovely talking to you guys. Lovely being here. Um, and I'll just say, take care, stay blessed, and uh, see you in the next one. Later.